Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Disney Cruise Line Show, coming to you from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined via Skype this week by my good friends, Diz Associate Editor, Ms. Denny Sunderly. Hi there. Diz President, Webmaster, and Jack of All Trades, Mr. Corey Martin. I'm just happy to be here. And, of course, our producer, Mr. Craig Williams. Ahoy, ahoy. Well, welcome to the show, folks. Before we get started, I just want to remind you that the show is brought to you by DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com, of which I am a part owner. And if you enjoy our content um, and would like to support our content, I would ask you to please uh, give Dreams a try uh, booking your next Disney Cruise Line vacation. You're going to pay the same amount as you would if you went through Disney directly. Um, Disney pays Dreams a commission, which is how we make our money but it's the same price, but you also get a shipboard credit from us. That could be up to, I think it's like a thousand dollars, right? Corey, isn't that the shipboard credit yeah. promotion? Up depending on how, yep. yeah, up to a thousand dollars, depending on how much you spend, you get the services of an incredible, a talented professional agent, uh, to help answer any questions you have, um, and help you navigate what to do. Um, and, uh, you also get an exclusive gift bag of things, you didn't know you needed uh, for your Disney cruise uh, delivered to your home a few weeks before your sailing. Um, all that for the same price you're going to pay Disney. So please, dreamsunlimitedtravel.com, show us your support, and uh, book your next cruise vacation with us. So, all right, with that out of the way, um, the show that we're going to do is not the show I originally planned when we sat down. Um I uh, wanted to talk about our favorite shore excursions, only to find that in the room right now, or in the show, on the show right now, I'm the only one that's really done any. These guys have all been on a lot of shore excursions, or a lot of cruises. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So we're changing it uh, from talking about our favorite shore excursions to just a general discussion about them and why... Some of us do, and some of us don't take any. So um, I was really surprised with uh, when Denny, Denny Sunderly, <laughs> uh, told me right before we started recording that she has been on, I believe, 11 cruises, mm -hmm. never yes. done a shore excursion. Why not? Okay. So for us, when we're cruising, um, for the lion's share of the cruises that we've been on, it's been six of us. So grandma, grandpa, my husband and I, and our two kids. Six people getting to the ship, getting on a cruise, it can be pricey, right? I mean, we've talked about that before, that Disney Cruise Line, comparatively speaking, is more expensive than, say, other cruise lines. Now, we believe, as a family of six, um, even when it's just my husband and I, that it is so worth it, like the level of service, all those things that we've talked about on the shows in the past. So when it comes to finally getting onto the ship, you've done all the travel needed to get there and all the expenses incurred on the way to getting onto the ship. The last thing that we have found um, that we want to do is go and, and spend more money taking us away from the ship. Um, for us, the ship is the vacation. It is, um, some, we want to savor as many moments as we have, like to the point where I don't go and see a movie because that'll be two and a half hours away from enjoying the ship. Like you have to really weigh all this out. And so for the six of us, we just haven't. Now my husband has taken each of our kids on one special adventure, shore excursion, port adventure before, and they loved them. Those I can speak to. We've also done things where you've gotten off the ship and paid a local guide or driver to take you up to the beach in Grand Cayman or, you know, another beach in Cozumel, that kind of thing. So you have options. But for the most part, for us, the vacation is just getting on that ship. Now, I, I, I'm glad you brought that up about just kind of getting off the ship and doing your own thing. Um, and if you've done a number of cruises or if you're an experienced traveler. Right. And I mean experience like you've been to Europe, you've gone, you've gone and you've explored strange and, you, you know, places that you've never been before. You can probably get away with that. <clears throat> the thing to remember, though, where shore excursions are concerned, if something happens, yes. let's say you're on a shore excursion 
and your bus breaks down or, you know, and you booked it through the ship and your bus breaks down or something else happens and that transport is delayed getting back to the ship, the ship will wait for you. Yes. They will wait for you. So that's kind of an insurance policy. Doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. Whereas if you're off the ship and you've gone off on your own and you're late coming back, not only are you going to be waving goodbye to the ship and all your stuff that's still on board, you have to get yourself to the next port of call yep. to get back on the ship. And that can be that can be some drama. So it's important. It's important to remember that. Um, but uh, now, now, Corey. Um, the only you've done, God knows I'm, how many cruises. I'm up there, yeah. But the you know, I've we've never really done the shore excursions. We've always just explored, or the kids would just want to go to the pool. And I really think it's because of the kids that finding something um, for their age group that we would all enjoy, taking that much time away from the ship, in addition to the cost. We uh, Julie did remind me that we went, we did the Mayan ruins. Uh, on the Western Caribbean cruise, but we had Taylor with us, Julie's sister. And so I, you know, a seven day cruise, you can only do so much shopping with a teenager and two kids under 10. So we, put the, <laughs> <laughs> so we put the kids in the, uh, in the kids club while we went and did that, uh, the Mayan ruins with Taylor, because we, she's a teenager. We felt like we had to entertain her. Here she is helping us out. And she can only, again, watch us shop so much. But I think that was the only one that we've done. And I think as the kids grow, when they can say, Dad, I want to go pet some dolphins or something, or I want to go swim with the, the sharks, <laughs> <laughs> uh, then, then we may start entertaining it. But the last, the last cruise we went on, we, we were in Falma, Jamaica, and beautiful, beautiful area, how they have it set up for us. But there's not a lot for kids to do. We were walking around. You can only go in so many Breitling stores. And, you know, and so we're walking around and as we're going back to the ship, Julie said, you know what, we really need to do an excursion next time we come here. So there are certain ports where we really have to go explore through an excursion. I think that's one of them. But that's, it, you know, really, it's weighing the, the time away from the ship and how much it costs. Now, Craig, you're, uh, in, uh, you're another one that has done multiple cruises, yet. You were saying the only shore excursion you ever went on was the one that we did back in 2013 when we went to Alaska. So you want to talk about that one? Yeah, I can. So that was uh, that was one that you set up. It was uh, we had two excursions booked for that that trip to Alaska. We had the Jeep tour that took you into the Yukon territory and did a little off-roading and such. And that's the one that we got to do. The other one that we had booked way back when was to do one of the helicopters uh, where you land and then do the, the uh, dog sledding afterwards. And like, like many of those excursions, it was canceled for bad weather. So the one and yeah. only Disney cruise line excursion that I've done was, was that very, very first one that I ever had the opportunity to do. And I, you know, I loved it. I thought that it was amazingly put together and, uh, it just, you know, I I've done excursions through other cruises. Like I I've done it with Royal Caribbean. Uh, when one of our pod, our only podcast crews we did on that, I did an excursion on that one. When we did our Viking cruise in Italy, every port we stopped at, I think with the exception of maybe one, uh, we did an excursion on it. So like I, I know, I know what Disney set up versus those other ones, and you know, just just as good, high, highly entertaining. I think worth the money, especially when you're in a place where you're not comfortable and maybe don't know the area super super well. Uh, but then after that, it's really just been how how I cruise that's uh, not made it able for me to do too many shore excursions because I've only been on, I think one Disney cruise really, that's been like actually uh, a vacation cruise with my wife. And that was a uh, castaway key double dip. And you know, it's, I feel like 
every single time I go to Castaway anymore, all of the the limited excursions they have there aren't even running because of wind or something else. So you just go and enjoy that island. But <laughs> other than that, we do we do a lot of um, three and four night cruises, Bahamian cruises for work specifically that we're just in in our downtime when we're at those islands where we're kind of covering the ships and and doing activities on the ships not able to to really get off so and and beyond that the only other seven night disney cruise i've ever been on was podcast cruise four i think and with that cruise that was my second disney cruise and uh third cruise overall i didn't understand uh, shore excursions. So I, I just didn't know what they were. I I didn't know that you had to sign up for them ahead of time. And so it's, that was mostly, that was a trip that I would have been able to do some on. I just didn't understand them. So, uh, it's for people who, I, I wonder if there's other people out there like me who just genuinely did not know what shore excursions are. And they just wonder like, Oh, what's these pamphlets that they drop off at the room every day telling me what I can do in ports. But I'm also naive. So it's me. All right. Corey. Uh, I also want to mention before we had kids, Julie and I did a pleasure cruise. It wasn't Disney, a Mediterranean cruise through celebrity. And every night of that, every day of that cruise, we did a shore excursion. That was a a cruise that we just didn't want to take a chance of exploring. You know, it's not like NASA where you just go up and down a street. We didn't speak the languages, so we just we chose to do shore excursions for everything so we wouldn't miss anything. And I think, you know, with something like that, uh, you're in a different country. You don't speak the language. Well, and and that's, you know, that that's kind of what, you know, what my point was earlier was that, um, you know, when I first started doing cruises, I would only do shore excursions because I hadn't really traveled. You know, now I've been to Australia, I've been to Alaska, I've been all over Europe multiple times. Um, I'm very comfortable navigating in strange places. Um, and I feel okay if I decide I'm just, you know, I'm not going to do a shore excursion. I'm just going to get off the ship and walk. Uh, that being said, I do want to talk about some of my favorite shore excursions. Uh, Craig alluded to it. Um, uh, I did, on, we, this was, um, uh, in place of doing shore excursions, one option you have on certain itineraries is to do an Adventures by Disney add-on. And this is basically combining an Adventures by Disney trip with a Disney cruise. So every day you're in port, they have different things planned. And I did the ABD add-on. I've done it twice. I did it once in Alaska. I did it once in the Mediterranean. On the Alaska one, one of the things they set up was taking the helicopter to a glacier to do dog sledding. And fortunately, I didn't realize at that point that that's an excursion that gets canceled about 60% of the time, especially if you're going later in the season. In that August time frame, uh, it's much more likely that the cloud cover and the weather is not going to be conducive to a helicopter taking off and flying. We were fortunate. And even though I was crapping my pants getting on this helicopter, right? I'd never done it before. I was terrified. Um, And it ended up being one of the most magnificent experiences I've ever, ever had. A very expensive shore excursion. Not unusual for that shore excursion to go for $800 a person. So it's not for the faint of heart. Um, But I will tell you, uh, I did that back in, what was it, 2009? So, you know, 11 years ago, and God knows the number of cruises and shore excursions I've done since then. um, That still remains one of my favorite. My other very, very top of the list type of shore excursion was actually on Norwegian Cruise Line when I did a sailing around the Hawaiian Islands. And one of the shore excursions was a 3 a.m. departure on Maui uh, to drive up to the top of Haleakala and watch the sunrise. Oh, my God. You want to talk about a spiritual experience? You want to talk about something for the rest of your life you'll never forget? Um These are things I would not have booked on my own. These are things I only would have gone through the ship. 
And you will be tempted because you'll take a look at the ship and what they're charging, right? Because the ship is taking a piece of that. So, But those excursions are available outside of the ship. Same exact excursion, but less money. And again, you have to weigh in that insurance factor. Now, I saw, Denny, you were <laughs> waving around. It looked like a, a shore excursion list because yes. God knows this woman's always prepared. <laughs> good, um, good, good. Talk about yeah. some of the shore excursions you're seeing on there. Okay. So um, I can start with the two that our family has had um, personal experience with. One is in Cozumel, and it's the Explore Park um, adventure. So basically, it is getting off the ship. It's going from Cozumel to Playa del Carmen and via a ferry. And my husband um, reminded me that it is actually, it's an enclosed, like you're inside a ship. So he said it was kind of whiffy getting over to the mainland on that ferry. Um, and then you take a bus ride to the explore park and it's x the letter x p l o r so that's how they spell explore and um it's zip lining and he loved it he said that was fantastic you're actually swimming through caves at one part of, uh, of the journey and then you end up at a very disappointing buffet so he said he actually used the word horrific to describe the buffet that was served on the on the shore excursion. So maybe steer clear of that. But it is two hundred and nineteen dollars a person. So this was a special thing um, that he did with our with our eldest. The second one was Castaway Ray Stingray Adventure. I think everybody probably you know everybody in a in a sailing family does that eventually. That's on um, Castaway Key, and for a just 10 and up, it's $54, if I remember. Let me get my notes here. Uh, $56. And for ages 5 through 9, it's um, 45 right now. And it's an hour. You are in crystal clear water. It's super, super safe. And you get to be there with the stingrays. So if you want a little bit um, of enjoyment with the stingrays, a little bit of nature, that's that's a great option. And I just I want to reiterate what Pete said as far as um, get we'll get off and we'll walk uh, and to a favorite restaurant. We have a family favorite, Las Palmas in Cosimo. And you've got to make a beeline up the main road to get there. And of course, you've got all the shopkeepers who want you to come on into their store at that moment. But you have to watch the time. If uh, We have been on the ship before when they start calling the list of names who are not on the ship at, at p- time to pull away. I mean... It's scary, guys. So please keep an eye on that because that would be an absolute nightmare not to be able to make it back to the ship in time. Um, there's dolphin. There's a dolphin observer and Stingray City adventure in Grand Cayman. Um, as of the time of printing, this was printed last uh, May two, twenty nineteen. Uh, it was forty five bucks. Um, there's lots of like Rum Point Beach adventure. I know we stepped off the ship and in um, it, we we got on a, a little local um, jeep that would take us over to Maggins Bay. Like you don't want to traverse the entire island just to get to the beach, but sometimes you have to. So you've got to be able to get either here in, in a port adventure or um, or you want to do something locally and keep a good eye on the time. Um, also, some of these adventures, the Explore Park adventure that, that our eldest and my husband did was seven and a half hours. So yeah. that's an entire day of your cruise, basically. Some of them can be, can be very long, but you're talking about um, uh, some of the St. Martin excursions. Uh, on St. Thomas, when you're doing the Eastern Caribbean, um, another just exceptional excursion that I think everyone should experience at least once. Uh, is doing the shore excursion over to St. John Island. Um, and if you don't know about St. John Island, um, this is actually the entire island is a U.S. national park. It was gifted to the U.S. government by one of the Rockefellers. I forgot which one it was. Under the provision that no more than 20% of it could be developed. So 80% of this island remains in its natural state. And like I said, it's all considered a national park. So 
you know, you go to St. Martin, Cozumel, all these islands and all these places in the Caribbean, and they are very, very developed. I'm not saying they're not beautiful. Well, Western Caribbean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but they're all very heavily developed. So when you go to St. John, you actually get, there's not a lot of stores. There are, there are some stores, there are some restaurants, just not like what you're used to. Instead, what you have is this true island caribbean paradise that is exceptional um and you know the first couple times i did it i did it as a shore excursion once i did it a few times i would start doing it on my own just grab a taxi at the port go up to the ferry get a ticket for the ferry go over um always i always give myself that that buffer time Right. So if I knew if we had to be back on the ship at, say, six o'clock and I knew it was going to take about 45 minutes to get from the ferry back to the ship, then I was giving myself at least two, two and a half hours um, because I was not going to take any chances if I, if I wasn't on a shore excursion. Um, I can also talk about the one in the Mediterranean, the, uh, the day the, uh, when you're in Rome. And you do the day trip of Rome. They talk it. They call it a walking tour of Rome. I called it a running tour of Rome, because you will literally go into the Vatican, see the Sistine Chapel, go into St. Peter's Basilica, go to the Trevi Fountain, uh, go to the Colosseum, and have lunch uh, uh, in the span of this. It's also two hours from, uh, roughly an hour and a half, two hours by train from the uh, port in Civitavecchia. Uh, to the city of Rome um, and back. So this is a 12-hour day. No one comes back from that excursion not exhausted. And also, I don't think anybody comes back from that excursion not saying, okay, I need to come to Rome because you just get this appetizer platter. And for that was what it was for me. Is I got this appetizer of Rome and it became like almost an obsession that I had to get back there to actually take my time and experience that city. I got to do that in uh, really in 2014 for the first time. It took me about five years uh, to do it, but I got to, to do that in 2014. And just to be able, and this is one of the things I love about Europe, you could pretty much most places, especially in tourist areas, you could walk around at night and not feel not feel unsafe, not feel like you're worried about getting mugged or beaten up or shot or anything like that. Um, so I would just take my camera and go walk around the city at night and do all these night shots. I have some of the best pictures I ever took uh, was was doing stuff like that. So, Denny or, yeah, or Corey, yeah. Corey, yeah. I think Corey had his hand up. Oh, uh, going you said, talking about the European um, excursions. I think Julie and I probably did the same one. You're talking about that whirlwind tour. I think we did the same one with Celebrity. And you're right. You come back just completely exhausted, but you see so much packed into a little time. It, it is it is just like a little taste. I think uh, you're definitely going to get that with excursions. And I also want to mention that if you oversleep and you miss your excursion, you're not going to get refunded. This was no, before probably. we had. This was before we had kids. So we, um, you know, we were out late, and we were when we slept in. And this was a tour. This was a a Greek uh, excursion we booked. We were going to see the Parthenon. We were going to do all this stuff, and then we overslept. So we ended up taking a cab somewhere, and the cab driver brought us to like a view of the Parthenon. We couldn't go up there, but we got a little taste of it. But that's no. If you miss your short, short excursion, they will still charge you. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, you did. I, well, I, Walter and I were supposed to be with you on that trip, but I didn't right, get my yeah. passport in time. Right. But um, I remember you guys saying that, you know, you knew you were going to start a family at some point and you wanted to take advantage of those experiences as much as you could before the kids started coming. So I and, and I think you're probably grateful that you did that. at this Right. Point. Fer Ferris was almost called Santorini. So <laughs> it doesn't have the same ring to it. <laughs> Santorini, Martin. Santorini. Yeah. Um, that is go great. ahead, Denny. 
Yeah. So um, speaking on what uh, Corey was talking about, cancellations for DCL um, port adventures can be made up to three days prior to the cruise departure. After that, all reservations, as it says, are final and non-refundable. So make sure you can make that uh, port adventure once you book it. Um, but I wanted to point out real quick to the to the the parents who are listening. If you you'll hear if you've got a kid who is age 14 to 17, you'll hear a lot about the Wild Side Teen Adventure on uh, Castaway Key. And so that is something. It's a it's like a four hour adventure. It's about forty. Well, it's forty nine dollars. And they get to do, um, they get to go on adventures with other teens. It's only 14 to 17 and their counselors from the kids club, from the youth club. So it's, and it's they get pretty them, neat. They get them drunk, right? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, no, uh, they go snorkeling and hiking and they go on a high speed boat ride. So it's stuff that really appeals, um, to, to the teens. But a lot of times when it's talked about on the ship, um, it almost sounds like it's included and it's not included. It is something that your kid, that you have to sign your kid up for and, and pay, um, um, and also, just in case y'all, you know, somebody who's watching or listening has never been, doesn't know what a port adventure, similar to what Craig was saying earlier, you don't know what in the world this is. These are all the options that you can do at an extra cost on your cruise vacation. Um, if you're just curious, obviously, the Diz, we've got tons of info, but if you're on the ship, you can swing by the Port Adventure desk on the Magic and Wonder. It's on deck three. And on uh, the Fantasy and the Dream, it's on deck five. And they'll have these big pamphlets just sitting out there. You can take it. You know, your options will be fewer once you're on the ship because some of the adventures will be full. But, uh, but you can talk to a cast member there about which ones are still having availability at that time. And also, just for a shameless plug... Um, your Dreams Unlimited Travel shipboard credit, um, you know, gets put onto your shipboard account. You can use that shipboard credit to pay for a shore excursion. Yes, um, you can. So just want to remind everybody of that. Um, but it's also, you know, the strategy, you know, the strategy that we always talk about, make sure you book early, right? Take advantage as soon as new sailings uh, are announced. Get in line. To get that's the lowest price you're going to get. That's one way you're going to save money that may make it a little more palatable to do some of these shore excursions, certainly our shipboard credit, um, and do the research. Uh, the cruise line forum on disboards.com. I'm pretty sure the folks on that board, you'll it, no matter what shore excursion you want to do, yeah. you are going to find somebody that's done it and it could tell you what they thought of it. So, uh, disboards.com and then just look for the Disney Cruise Line forum. We'll put links to all this stuff in the show notes right below this video, or if you're listening on iTunes, um, you can just head over to disunplug.com and find our show notes there. But I, I think, you know, it's also important. And again, I think this applies more to Disney fans than it does to the general population. These ships are a destination for us in ways that most cruise ships aren't for most people. Um, I don't need to get off the ship, um, because when, when they're in port, they're still serving food. The pools are still open. Most importantly, the spa is still open. Um, and I don't have to worry, you know, look, my whole life is where do I got to be in an hour? One of the things I love about being on a cruise is I don't have to worry about that. So, <laughs> you know what? And, and there is that experience. <laughs> It seems to be, honest to God, it seems to be a cruise is the only place that I'll actually relax. I mean, genuinely. It's not that I'm not going to check my phone. It's not that I'm not going to work. But my work generally doesn't stress me out. It's like, oh, God, I got to be here. I got to do this. I got to do that. Um, I love being on the cruise. I don't have to, I don't have to worry about that stuff. So I, I think it's important to point out that, <clears throat> well, you sure, you, you, you want to have experiences in some of these ports, especially if it's the only time you're ever going to do it. But if you've done multiple sailings and you've done some things, you know, these ships stand on their own. That's one of the great things about Disney, Disney Cruise Line. And, you know, one of the reasons why it is more expensive. Corey, what do you got? 
Uh, I know this probably isn't considered an excursion, it's, but it's very popular and it's something you should definitely book in advance and it's something we enjoy doing, renting the cabana at Castaway. For something, we've, we've seen Castaway Key so many times, but having that cabana is that extra add-on. It, you know, it's, I would rather take my extra money and put it towards that for our stay because it really does, it takes the stress out of being a dad because you have to get to that beach early and you have to stake out your spot, a good spot. And that, that stresses me out. I'll start thinking about that on day one, getting that perfect spot at Castaway and having that cabana just takes that stress away. You have your own spot to chill and relax and let the kids just, that's relaxing for me. But I know it's not a short excursion, but you know, it's a, it's an add on that, um, that we really enjoy. Yeah. Um, uh, I've I've done the cabanas many many times. They're expensive, but worth every penny. Mm-hmm. Worth every penny. Having your own private space because I'm not a beach guy, right? I'm not gonna hang out, especially right now. The, like, you know, the Japanese would harpoon me. Um, so uh, you know, I. But having the cabana, you can just kind of hang out, and they've got little lounges in there, and you got your refrigerator full of uh, uh, full of sodas and. Uh, snacks, and you got that button on the wall. If you want drinks, <laughs> if you want something, you hit the button, and a couple minutes later, somebody shows up. Um, mm-hmm. You know, a couple times, they've even offered to go fix my my food over a cookie's barbecue if I didn't feel like going over there. <laughs> um, so, you know, but the cabanas are, if you're not in concierge, they're virtually impossible to get. Um, you can wait list for them. But you really have to be, you know, you, you've got to be platinum booking in that, you know, because you have that extra booking window for uh, for those uh, for those cabanas if you're platinum. But there's so many platinums now that they're usually right. gone by the time it opens up to everybody else. So if you're not in concierge, because concierge can pretty much get them, they also hold back a lot for that mm. reason. Um, so, but no, the cabanas are are fantastic. Before we wrap up, anything uh, anyone else wants to add? Greg, Corey, Denny. All right, guys, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for being here. We hope you enjoyed it. That will do it for this episode of the Disney Cruise Line Show, and we will see you again next week. Have a great week, folks.